continuing with the short note series of microbiology and we will be discussing rhinosporidiasis. Rhinosporidiasis. Rhinosporidiasis is a chronic granulomatous disease and the classic features of rhinosporidiasis are formation of friable polyps, then hyperplasia of nasal mucosa and usually the polyp formation is confined to nose, mouth, eye and rarely it will be infecting the genitalia and mucous membrane. The causative agent is Rhinosporidium seabury. I'll briefly explain the features of Rhinosporidium seabury. Initially, Rhinosporidium seabury was believed to be a sporozoan, but later Ashworth classified it under fungus and he described the life cycle and infectivity of seabury. So it is believed that the spore is the most infective unit of Rhinosporidium seabury. But recently, it is placed under drips of aquatic protestant parasite. Moving on to the types of rhinosporidiasis. Five major types of rhinosporidiasis are nasal, nasopharyngeal, mixed, bizarre and malignant type. The first one is nasal type. So as the name suggests, in nasal type, the nasal mucosa will be infected. Next is nasopharyngeal type and in nasopharyngeal type the na both the nasal mucosa and pharyngeal mucosa will be infected and in mixed type we can see the features of both nasal rhinosporidiasis and nasopharyngeal rhinosporidiasis. Next is bizarre type. In bizarre type ocular and genital lesions also are seen and in malignant type cutaneous lesions are seen. Next, we will be discussing about the features of rhinosporidiasis. So, as we discussed earlier, polyp formation is the classic feature of rhinosporidiasis. So, the polyps are usually reddish in color and granular. And there will be multiple polyp formation. And the polyps are pedunculated and friable. The surface of the polyp are studded with white dots and these white dots are believed to be sporangias. Usually the polyps are highly vascular and due to this high vascularity it will bleed spontaneously on mild touch and the polyp will be covered with mucus secretion. So these are the features of rhinosporidiasis. The nasal rhinosporidiasis have three cardinal features. They are chronicity, recurrence and dissemination. Usually in nasal rhinosporidiasis, hematogenous dissemination is recorded. Next, we will be discussing what are the symptoms present in an individual infected with rhinosporidium seabury. They are unilateral nasal obstruction that is either the right or left nasal passage will be obstructed. Then epistasis that is nasal bleeding. Next is local pruritus that is the individual or the patient will be feel chinus. Then comes the rhinorrhea that is running nose. There will be clear watery or thick mucosal drainage from the nasal passage. Next is the post nasal discharge with cuff. So these are the symptoms of an individual infected with rhinosporidium seabury. Usually, the mode of infection is believed to be from contaminant or stagnant water. Next is diagnosis. On histopathological examination, we can see fungal spherules that is sporangias which, which forms hundreds of endospores and they are usually 100 to 200 micrometer in diameter. And finally, the treatment of rhinosporidiasis. Uh, we treat this disease by excising the polyp. So excision of the polyp is a treatment here. And as an adjunct to the surgery, Dapsin will be administered to the patient. The dosage of Dapsin is 100 mg once daily to 6 months. The Dapsin can prevent the maturation of spores. That's all about rhinosporidiasis. Thank you.